actually going to come back after all? When? A hiatus. I don't know if I'll come back full stop. Okay. I might stay up in Scotland. Please do. Good. Fuck you. You ready? Yeah. This podcast may contain crucial language, will contain spoilers, and he's going on hiatus. Possibly to never return. <laughs> And welcome to episode 267 of Movie Drone. I'm a bit achy, Steve. I'm a bit jakey, Mark. <laughs> Doesn't make no sense. Well, well, don't you ever get up in the morning, stretch, go, oh, I'm a bit achy jakey this morning. <laughs> nope, just me then. Cool. Yeah, oh, I'm an adult. I, uh, you said about the hiatus mm. thing. Now, I'm a, you know, I heard something uh, this week, and it was a little bit disturbing, a little bit of a weird thing. So you, uh, you had a guest spot on something. Mm. And uh, I got invited, like the, the middleman, because obviously he was using the email account, weren't you? The movie drone one. So all of the audio from said guest spot yeah. got sent to me as well. Right. So I had yeah. a little bit of a listen. Really quite weird, yeah. you know what I mean? Like just listening to you, yeah. silent, yeah. and then speaking. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I heard you say some very complimentary things about how you'd miss me and how you like seeing me and that. So... Not, Selling not, the brand, mate. I'm not quite I? sure that I could. Uh, that I that was. I'm sure that was when you were just talking. Yes. Um. Not on the park. So I'm. I, you know. I'm not sure I could deprive you of my, my joyous, uh, person, mm. in person. But uh, we'll see. So we are see coming back. Then. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I'll just come round here and watch a film every every yeah, once in a while. Well, you know, it, yeah. it doesn't only matter, does it? As long as you get to see me once a year. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> oh dear, have you been? I've been all right, mate. I've got got a fence done. What? Got the fence done, so that's a good job done, isn't it? I mean, it's a job. Yep. Yeah, I broke myself doing it, though. I was like four days. I was still out there at half nine one night having a burn up. <laughs> got, got, oh, look, I've even got a Keith Lemon impression. Oh, uh, my God. Oh, that's, oh, no. <laughs> that's disgusting. It's not stinking yet, mate. You can't have, oh, you can't have bandages and that on that. Nowadays, there's like nice sort No, of you look like thing, an support absolute things. retard with a mate. Well, no, I don't mean like the horrible things that you have when you... Flesh colour. Like a proper, like, um, you know, like a proper sportsman one. Because no, like I a, can put this in the wash. That's, that's I said I'm waiting vile, until it's like Friday for it's stinky it's then. It's disgusting. I hurt myself, though, so I'm waiting for a stinky hand. Uh, I spent a lot of time up hospitals. That's been fun. Really? A lot of the air... NHS, mate, is fucked. It's, I'm sure it wasn't. There was, there was people laying in corridors... Hooked up to drips that just couldn't get beds. What? I was there from ten past ten one night, and I left the hospital quarter six in the morning. What did you go there for? Uh, Cass is having some issues, what? some breathing issues. Um, mm. So got there. We so we, yeah, we was there in that time. We got triaged, had a blood test, and that was it. I thought you was going to say you went up there for your hand, and I was no. going to say that's the fucking reason no. why no one can get seen no, because. No, she- you know, people go up there for like when they oh, got no. fucking colds and that. That's mm. why it's like it because people are dumb. I oh, know, but there's people in corridor. You, you see the nurses, mate. They looked fucked, like walking zombies. They were people sitting in corridors, drips on them. Can't get a poor fella next to me. Couldn't get a bed. It was oh, it's horrific. And I've been up another one for a few hours, and they go, "You need to get doctor support as well." No, been trying for the last two weeks, you pricks. Can't get one, can you? <laughs> we, we need to have a cull. Yeah, I a cull. it's just they are overwhelmed, I'm well, going to say. Who would we cull? Podcasters? Get I like, rid of all them. I like the Thanos. Celebrity podcasters, get rid of them. Yeah, I like the Thanos time. thing. Do you? 50% random people. Yeah? Yeah, I'll oh, take my chances. Fair enough, fair enough. A bit of a coin, That would it? help, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah, that was pretty horrendous. Other than that, mate, I've got a new tree. Excited right. about my new tree. <laughs> To, it, it got in the way. I had to walk around yeah. it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate Trying it. to put some life back in the garden. You see, we've made it a bit homogenous where we've been doing all this work. So I'm starting on my aviary soon. <coughs> I've got all the gear for that. You still uh, got that budgie? Or is that dead? Yeah, it's still in there. Oh, is it? Still in there, squawking yeah. away. So starting on the little aviary. You ain't but... said nothing about the budgie. You ain't mentioned the budgie. Is you gone off the budgie? 
No, it's lovely. You, you don't mention the budgie at all. Because you didn't give less of a fuck the first well, time no. I mentioned well, it. Well, because you killed the first one. Yeah, you know, well. If you're just going to get them and kill them, I don't like it. Well, this, no, this one's in there. Oh, it well, jumps okay. around. Oh. It does like, it's like a helicopter when it flies around the lounge. Oh. Oh. All right. Pass your head. Squarks at you. Oh, you let air on it? Well, you it's can't just leave a bird. This is the thing, see. I look at it in a cage and I think there ain't no life it's for a shit bird. Everywhere, isn't it? On yours. No, it can't. Goes in and has a shit. No, it fucking doesn't. It shits where it wants. Never you sh- just don't found it yet. If yeah, it says the place, sh- it shits. It don't stay out. It sort of flies around a little bit, then goes back shits in for and goes back in. Then <laughs> comes back out, but shits again and goes back in. I'm just trying to sort out for all the gear on it now. So I've got all the stuff. Just got to dig a load of holes. I've got rat proof it, and I and not dig some foundation. You're gonna have so many dramas with this thing, mate. Ah, it's be fucking right. honestly. No, it's. Fine, mate. It's going to be good. So I'm going to make that. That's my sort of summer project, if that ever turns up. Do you know what? I think if if we didn't come back on the podcast, we definitely have to come back when that Avery fucking goes up. There's going to be dramas there. There's going to be dead birds everywhere. All sorts. Oh, I mean, I I can't guarantee the birds won't die, but the Avery (laughs) would be fine. I can screw a bit of wood together. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to get the garden done. So we got, we had trees turn out left, right, and centre. Uh-huh. Spent far too much money the last couple of weeks on trees. I got a bit excited. She had to march me out of the place. Uh-huh. And then I went back and ordered another one to sneak on the delivery. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought I'll, I'll well, sneak in there. That's not like me and my team move. <laughs> yeah, what I did, mate? I was like, I went, I've got your present turn up tomorrow. Oh, yeah, got you something. So I've done it as a present. That sounds it's like my Timo as well. Yeah. I always get Jill saying when I order a load of Timo yeah. just to soften the blow of yeah, it turning that's, up. that's pretty much what Just I in did. case I'm not in when it comes. Like, I've got delivery coming Tuesday. <laughs> Quite a big one. Quite a few trees. Can I chuck something else on it? Of course <laughs> you can. Lovely. So on it went. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, but how's your week been, mate? Training going all right? Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah. 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 I've got four more runs, I think, till the big day. Big day's next Sunday. So, When's the knee uh, twist coming? No, listen, I'm trying to, I'm adding risk into, unnecessary risk into my uh, daily routine. So, uh, so I've, I, I ran out of some, uh, you know, I take supplements and that and I ran out. I couldn't get the ones I normally get. So I bought some on eBay. So that added a, That's uh, be good, isn't it? that added a uh, unnecessary risk. And then at work, they I've, come from Charles then or something. Know, there were some from Poland. Right, no, that's uh, right. Yeah, I'm sure they've got the same sort of level of testing. HTC. That we're, yeah. And, uh, and then uh, I have started driving MHE at work, so I've added that risk in, so I could easily come off one of them or right. hurt myself there. Yeah. So, you know, just uh, just playing with fire at the moment. But I just want to thank all the sponsors. You know, we've had some sponsors on the podcast, Paul and Luke and you, mm-hmm. um, loads of friend, family. I've had people from work. Some woman today, lovely woman, gave me 100 quid. Jesus. Yeah, and another friend gave me 100 pound, and then companies at work have been giving me 100 pound, someone anonymously. We're up to over 1,500 pound well, now, mate, mate, for the animals. That's good, so, isn't it? That's that should keep him going for a little while. Yeah, you saw the photos, didn't you? I did. Photos, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yeah, I saw good. a little hazel dormouse all sort of... It was a squirrel. In. Was that a squirrel? Yeah. yeah. It was, was it? A couple of day old squirrel, yeah. Yeah. A couple Jesus. Yeah. No Grey little, one? Yeah. Those little fox. Oh, not nice. allowed, yeah, not allowed to release them. But, no. And no, um, what they do with that then? They escape. But, um, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what they say. They put them outside and if they get out, that's beyond <laughs> there. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All understood, mate. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they probably do them in. No, I'm sure they stay there and that. Yeah. they got aviaries and that. But the little, uh, the little foxes I get to feed. Right. They were a few days old, didn't have their eyes open. Oh, couple of them, yeah. So that was so that was lovely. That Good was to lovely see someone to. doing some good, isn't it, with all this shit going yeah, on? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so, so, so I just want to thank everybody for uh, for sponsorship, no matter whether it was a pound or whether it was whatever. It was absolutely fantastic. Jill's been great. She's been picking stuff up. So I'm all, I'm all ready to go and got I'm quite vest. excited. I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah tried it on. Yeah, Straight yeah, yeah. around in it, <laughs> a little picture. bit. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. quite, it's quite flimsy. You know what yeah. I mean? But you know, if you got it, got it, flaunt it. What are you doing with your nipples? Uh, <laughs> I've either got runners rub, right, or I've got nip guards. Have you? So yeah, okay. and just uh, but there you go. But yeah. uh, Jill's doing a half marathon on Sunday, so let's just wish her yeah, well good done, luck Jill. for that. She thanks uh, for not doing it like fundraising. So I had to sponsor both of you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's once in a blue moon, mate, isn't it? Once yeah. in a blue moon. No, so. Fair play, mate. I think that's it's, good. It's nice to see. Nice to see. Yeah, so four more runs. So that's good. And then I've got a bit of time off, and I for holiday. Mm. So uh, so yeah, I'm off for a few days. Got the marathon, and I'm in work for. A few days and then I'm off for uh, 17 days. I'm off to Scotland um, to do the uh, North Coast 500 in I mean, a camp. You say 17 days. How long did you last last time? 
what with COVID, the COVID one. <laughs> I think we managed to get like three days. Yeah, I had to drive home for 14 hours because yeah. they didn't have no hotels open. Yeah, yeah I don't think that's going to happen no, no more because no one gives a on. fuck, do they, about no. COVID and that. Oh, yeah, so as long as I make it to the North Coast, then uh, then that'll be good. So I wish you both a good. lovely trip. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And mate. huge luck in the marathon. I assume this, when's the marathon? A couple of weeks? Sunday the 21st. Sunday the 21st. So, yeah, okay. So this will be out before then. So. Yeah. I've got, a, if you get the app, yeah. you can, I can give you my bib number. Okay. And then you can track me. Probably not. I'll be on a Sunday and I'll be busy. <laughs> <laughs> Just have it on the background anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, ke- I'll keep keep a track on you, mate. Yeah. But yeah. I, hope it, I hope it goes all right. And anyone Good. who's like listening before that, to make sure and tweet him on his personal page. <laughs> he loves stuff like that. <laughs> Wish him well. Thank you very much, Mark. So, mate, got any thanks? Yes, mate. I've got thanks to Louis Rame, Soundtrack Your Life, Write Stuff Reviews, Keith Noakes, Miles, Mike, Mike and Oscar. Watch if you can talk nerdy to me dan bradley and sean panda nicholson thank you very much everyone for the retweets on the old exarooni i've got special thanks this week to jill cassie jamie russell emirate movies lj humany and mcintyre mr positivity and eric kareem heliwell ben and paul from film busters peter from movie jewel podcast ryan and glynn and uh, again thank you to everybody who's done everything for me foot to marathon Probably. cinema recall is available everywhere you find great podcasts. The hell was that? It's our voice promo guy. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram under Cinema Recall Podcast and on Twitter at Cinema underscore Recall. Vern, can we afford to have a voiceover guy? We can't afford not to. He used to be a voice guy for movie trailers, but now he just follows me around and gives me movie trailer narration. That's really sad. What? Now we're giving him purpose in life. He now has a reason to go on. Check out past episodes at cinemarecall.net. Promise it's fun! That's our friend uh, Cinema Recall. Vern gets around, doesn't he? Mm. So uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's uh, due to be on an episode with someone doing Titan, I think. Titan, is that what he was? Yep. And uh, yeah, Foxy Brown, uh, they're having someone on the Patreon for. And Psycho Sex Dolls, they did, which sounds good. Mm. Um, some good films there. Psycho Sex Doll sounds good. Yeah. Oh, it probably isn't. Is it? Yeah. No. But, um, yeah, so he's getting around a bit. He is. A bit. Like Frank. <laughs> Frank, I forgot to mention Frank. Frank the fat pigeon. <laughs> right, now, I put some grass seed down, and I? Because I've got some bits. Yeah, fucker, mate. I'm chasing him out of the garden about 20 times a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's getting everywhere. Is he? Yeah. He's pissing me off. <laughs> he's pissing me off. I have to keep running out clapping me hand <laughs> he's not reacting to the dog bark anymore you look like a scarecrow anyway yeah, so. well, I just opened the door and, and he used to fly off now oh. he's don't give a fuck about that then I started to cat one didn't like that so he was off now he don't give a fuck <laughs> Yeah, you know, they learn you know animals are quite are quite clear it'll only learn so much mate before it ends up on a barbecue because that's Ooh, eating lovely. that's eating my seed <laughs> Right. I don't know what that's got to do with cinema recall. Nothing. Just he said it's getting around a bit, and I was, I was looking through the gap in the window and trying to see on the fence if Frank was there. <laughs> looking a bit distracted, I saw something move, and I yeah. thought that bastard's back. <laughs> it's. Uh, I, I actually talking about. We. I went into the car park. Um, I went to CEX the other day because mm-hmm. we wanted to get a few. Uh, DVDs yeah. for our uh, camper van holiday. I got uh, the complete series one of Columbo. Right. Blind, nice, yeah. Yeah. And there was a bloke driving around the car park with his window open with a pigeon on his shoulder. Frank. What do you reckon? Because <laughs> we had the conversation. Uh, I said, Jill said, oh, he's got a pet pigeon. I went, do you think he's a pet? She went, oh, do you think it's just flown in and landed on his shoulder? I went, well, we won't know, will we? Unless we ask him, but we didn't bother. So oh, Weird, wasn't risk, it? Risk, isn't it? How surreal is that? Imagine having a pet pigeon and it just mm. like flying off down the high street. Mm. Uh, do you know what one it is? <laughs> Frank. We want to come Frank. back. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the one who comes back. They'll all come back for a bit of grain, won't they? <laughs> so there we go. Uh, f- please listen to our lovely friend Cinema Recall mm. and The Vern and many different podcasts. Mm. Go on, then. Welcome to the Mark reads some film lines in some similar voices and Steve has to guess the film from the lines read to get points game. Hashtag what's that film? Well, if it is the last one, we're going out of a bang, aren't we? So uh, I'll edit that pause out. No worries, mate. So uh, what's that film? Mm. Uh, who got what and what was it? It was Pirates of the Caribbean. It was? Yeah. Um, Let Down got a two. Right. Ryan got a five. 
Kareem got one, mate. Not a lot of boys this week. I think it might have been a bit hard, but there's another one. I don't know if you want to do that one. She all got five. She yeah. got five. She's back, she's back in, in the five club. I bitches. Think she, she, uh, I didn't realise that it sort of meant anything to her. You know <laughs> what I mean? But like, she uh, she did point out the fact that she was going, uh, oh, she's got one, she's got one, because of what we said. So yeah. it's obviously great on her. Right. So, uh, so, yeah. So she's back in the game. What I should have done is not mention what she got at all, just to see if that pissed her <laughs> off. <laughs> Why Eddie out, just as if she doesn't exist in the what's that film. <laughs> Maybe if we got a few more You've, people who have played, I wouldn't I would have done but You have got seventeen days in a motorhome with a mate. I'd play safe <laughs> if I was you. They were in a room to escape to. Yeah, I can see some stressful moments coming up in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Maybe I will. So uh yeah, uh mate, what you got this week? So five points, mate. What's that film? No. I just like to read the T V guide. Read the T V guide? You don't need a TV. I mean, I do actually recognise it, but I, I'm not going to be able to, to guess it from that. I don't think, mate. Four points. What's the film? It was all going to be so perfect, Lucy. Like just one big happy family. Your boys and my boys. No. <laughs> well, it's a good, good guess. Not really. No. Uh, three points. What's the film? It's too late. Your blood is in my veins. It's thrown me off a bit, mate, that is. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, it has. Uh, I don't know. No? No. Two points. What's that feel? Second shelf is mine. That's where I keep my root beers and my double thick Oreo cookies. Nobody touches a second shelf but me. <laughs> I think I should know it. Uh, oh, here we go. No, oh, I don't mean it's as big, big enough film. I don't know whether your affinity with it is as big as mine. Well, obviously not. No. Clearly not. No, I don't know. No, one point. Yeah. What's that feel? My own brother, a damn blood-sucking vampire. You wait till mum finds out, buddy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. Right. I mean, yeah, don't yeah. really like it. No, you don't? But not really. Okay. No, not really. But uh, but there you go. So if you know what that is, please uh, let us know what you think it is and how many you think you got via mm. DM only, please. Moving on? Yeah. This is well, it turns out people don't really like quick fire oh. fucking thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like had a few coming like a wave. <laughs> yeah, had a few people. Stop that shit. We're going to give you a question. Fuck you ever, isn't it? <laughs> I thought it was good last I, week. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah. it. But um, so, mate, if you want to join in this uh, this uh, vendetta against us doing mm. uh, doing quick fired questions, where can people send them, mate? Well, they can send them via the old ex which is at movie underscore drone or via email on movie drone podcast at hotmail.com. And we might answer them. <laughs> There's going to be uh, this moment where, you know, where you get to see whether people have read messages. Mm. I was just going to go dead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put, don't put, don't ask for red receipts on your yeah. emails. You know what I mean? Because like, you might be disappointed. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, mate, moving on again. Yeah. This is the next section. This is a section we love to call Question, question time. time. Question time. Question time. Time for the question. Question time. Question time. Question time. Question time. time for the question. Question time. There we go. I listened to uh, one of our old episodes the other day. All right. Um, I can't even think what film it was I wanted to know about and I was like I can't remember what I thought of that and it was where we was in Corona and he was like question time question time <laughs> and we couldn't quite match it up maybe right. not is it a halcyon days of Corona yeah it was weird wasn't it it was it lovely was wasn't it? it was lovely it was, it lovely, was yeah. you can hear you can actually hear the weirdness in our voice Right. Where we're all struggling to get around what's happening. <laughs> I enjoyed it, apart from the fact that I've, I worked in food and I had to yeah. go work every day. It yeah. was shit, but there you go. And obviously the coronavirus. Other than that, I yeah. like Other than that, it was all right. <laughs> yeah. So, mate, uh, someone did send a question in. Yeah. Who's it from and what's it about? It's from LJ Human, mate, and he says, I know you pride yourselves on being a particularly academic and cerebral podcast, so hopefully here's a suitable question. What are your five favourite films based on novels or books you would like to be made into films that haven't been done yet? There we go. Mm. Uh, I've re been reading a bit more, mm. you know, a little bit Good more. For you. Well, not recently. Yeah. I've been looking at um, Facebook and that a bit more recently. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I was reading for, yeah. for a little while, so that's good, isn't it? That's good. 
But I've got a few. Yeah. Um, what you got? So my number five, mate. I've got the Running Man. Right. Right now, I got this because it's nothing like the book, really. A lot of differences, a lot of differences, and I only really wanted to bring this one up and mention it because it's been mooted around that we're getting a remake, right. a remake, but it's going to be more like the book. And that on get beyond because it's not a direct remake. They're right. going to try and stick more to the theme of the book of Stephen King's writing. Right. You know what? I haven't read none of these, mm? so I wouldn't have a clue whether okay. they're any good or not. I've, I've not read any, and I don't really intend to, if I'm honest. So my number five, is it? Mm. It's the Lord of the Rings trilogy, because I'd never read that book, but they were good films. Okay, so it brought the Tolkien story to you that you would never actually Oh, yeah, I'd have. never read it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, good, it's a good way of doing it, isn't it? Because there are people missing out on that, yeah. and actually, if you can sit through a film... There is a book, there is a series of fantasy books that I've got at home and I've had since I was young and I still kept and I really want to read. It's the Shannara series, Sword of Shannara and Elfstone of Shannara and stuff. And I really want to read them. So I've just got to try and find some sort of imagination from somewhere. Yeah, see, what I want to do is I want to try and find out some films that are going to be made based on books and read the books first. Because right. I've got a habit of reading the books from films and you've always got that thing in your imagination what people look like I can't imagine what I'd think like if I like Lord of the Rings and dragons and shit like that when people who read the Lord of the Rings and then the film adaptation come out whether they even got close in their imagination I'm going to say probably because of the IMDB scores and that I'd say that it did do a good job oh okay uh, my number four mate um, To Kill a Mockingbird um, <laughs> something funny about that yeah just fucking years ago. No, I think it's a huge moral leader with a really important message that's still relevant today. I think it's great that kids do it and read about it. And read I've read book. that at school. It's a great book. I like to read that. It's a great film. Don't touch it. Don't redo it. I think it's. I think you learn a lot from that. It's a good story. There we go. Uh, my number four is it? Mm. Is uh, Into the Wild? Yep. Um, I, I don't think it's. I think it took a bit of liberty, but I don't really mind. I like the film. I've read both books that, he's, that have written about it. Uh, one's written from his sister's point of view. Right. Um, Can I just make a point? Mm. I don't care whether they're close to the book or anything. Okay. Just to let you know, right. you know, regardless of like, I, I, okay. I couldn't care fucking less, but the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just like the films. Okay, let's leave that one there then, okay? <laughs> Cheers for that. Number three for me, mate, The Green Mile. Great book, great film. Okay. Win win, like the words? yeah, good book was good. Uh, yeah, enjoyed good, it a lot. Okay. Good, good. Um, my number uh, three is it mm. is lawless. Okay, Forest. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, mean, I, that film like that. I don't think I'd want to read the book because I think you know. I think the film. So I'd really love the film. It's great. And like you know, I, I don't want to see any reason to ruin it. No, honestly. no, with you, mate, with you. So is one that I would like made, mate. And it's based. It would be based on the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. Now we had a we had a making of one with Oprah Winfrey a few years back. But I want to see a big budget thing of this. Right. I think it deserves it. I think it's worthy of something special. Right. In the likes guys of what was the one with the ladies who did all the maths for NASA hidden figures mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. Henrietta Lacks, huge hidden figure, really, still as much in the world today. As ever, don't no. know if you know who she is. No. She was she was a black lady back years and years ago, and she had a form of cancer, and her cancer was the first one that would grow in a culture. And her cells are called healer cells, and no. they still use them in all. So she's technically there's more of her alive today than's ever been when she was alive, because no. all of her cells are still around the world as healer cells, no. still testing on all that cancer research. Healer cells. No. Okay. Massive lady. Just she was a, a massive lady, or. No, she was quite a slim lady actually, oh, okay. but she's she 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 should be massive. She should be up there with the likes of Rosa Parks and stuff. I know it's a bit bad that what happened to her, but you and you read the treatment of her and why it became. It's pretty embarrassing, but I think the story needs to be told properly. Nice. Tell us. Okay. My number, what is it? Two. Two. Shutter Island. Yep. Great book. Great film. Great film. Better Great film. book. Better film. Oh, again, I've read, I've read it after watching the film. This is a bit that's annoying me. I wish I'd read it before. Again, don't care. Carry on. <laughs> okay. My number one, mate. One I can't believe's not been made. 
And someone might hear, hear and go, oh, I think you found it actually in 1974. Someone did do it. But I'm thinking of the likes of, um, what's the old one with old Jibby, like in the wheelchair? You know, oh, hello, I'm American. <laughs> I'm a scientist. That bloke, Stephen Hawking. What was it called? What was the film? The, uh, the Theory of Everything. Theory of Everything. Yeah. On the guys or something like that, these sciencey ones. And then we had the imitation game, didn't we? Now, I think we need a film based on. I mean, I've put The Origin of Species in there, but, I mean, pretty dull book. It took me a long time to get through that. Mm. A lot of talk about pigeons and finches. It, it took me a long time. But I want a life and time, sort of based off of that, of Charles Darwin slash Alfred Russell Wallace, a forgotten man of evolution. I think a biopic with them and how it all came about. We've had all this other stuff. I think there's enough in there. I want to know. I want a big Do costume you? film. Million pound budget, millions and millions. Charles Darwin, he's one of the most important scientists ever lived, mate. I mean, I've got to be honest, even the description of it's nearly making me go asleep. I've well, got, you got, fucking, you I got really Charles Darwin, right? And you've got oh. Alfred Russell Wallace. Now, Charles Darwin's a man with the money. Please, he's in downhouse. He's got the money. <laughs> Alfred Russell Wallace working Please club. stop. Oh. Please stop. It's fucking hell. I'll watch it. Uh, I'm good. Why don't you make it? Wait till AI comes out and do your own film. Oh, I could do, Sit couldn't in I? your own room and fall asleep. It's good enough for a £20 note. Ain't My number one, <laughs> stand by me. It's all right, the book. I, I don't care. The film, it's actually the film. based on a novella called The Body. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. But the film itself, it was basically described as like my childhood. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It was That was a great episode. I loved doing that. We it had, was fun. We had a bit of... Uh, yeah. A little bit of emotion behind that. Yeah. I've got some others. Uh, yeah. I've got some that I would turn into a film. I've got some others that I like the films of. I've got Last King of Scotland, mm. No Country for Old Men, mm. Gone Baby Gone, mm. The Town mm. and The Mist. And I would, uh, I thought it was a separate part of the question, um, f- books that I'd like to turn into film. It's one I just read, actually, called Party Time, yep. Saving, uh, Raving Arizona. Yeah, uh, it's about like someone who goes to American rave scene and stuff, and okay. and he's, it doesn't go well for him because his next two books are Hard Time and Prison Time. Ooh. It's by Sean Atwell, yeah. So okay. uh, yeah, so and Jill wants a Satsuma Complex by okay. Bob Mortimer okay. made into a film, right? Okay, not sure if that's possible. Probably not, mate. No? My only no. other honourables I've got is the Thomas Harris selection of Silence of the Lambs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. I mean, what a genius stroke that was. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. All right, that was that. Books are great. Huh? Not as good as films, but they're great. Are oh, they? I yeah. mean, I've, you know, I've, I've read that one. It was all right. Mm. So see if I get on to another one. <laughs> Thank you very much, Luke. And uh, yeah, so please send some questions in, everybody. Moving on. Yes, mate. We saw a film. We did, mate. We saw a film. It's currently 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb. It's a 15, one hour, 53 minutes build as a comedy. With a synopsis of when three childhood best friends pull a prank that goes wrong, they invent the imaginary Ricky Stanicki to get them out of trouble. 20 years later, they still use a non-existent Ricky as a handy alibi for their immature behaviour. It's an Amazon film. No numbers, and I can't find any release, as I assume they realised it wouldn't get that many award nominations. <laughs> Directed by Peter Farrelly, starring Zac Efron, Jermaine Fowler, Andrew Santino, Lex Scott Davis, Anya Savage, Jeff Ross, William H. Macy and John Cena. And this was 2024's Ricky Stanicki. Clip. <laughs> Stanicki, what up, man? Are you serious? Have someone call me when you get out of surgery, all right? You should drive out there. Ricky's been there for you guys your whole lives. The devil's in the details, my friend. <laughs> it worked. Atlantic City, here we come. What we got? Ricky's cancer is back. Why does it have to be cancer? Won't everybody get worried? Yeah. And that's going to take us right into the World Series. Ricky Stenicki. The best friend we never had. Mm. <laughs> that was loud, wasn't it? I'm sorry. That's all right. No matter. Uh, yeah, fucking... Ricky Stanicki. Um, I don't really know what to say. Forty nine point seven million dollar budget. Was it? Yeah, I seems like a lot. That. I think that they've seen like melon because it's lot. Amazon. I think someone's taken a bit of. You're A bit of watermelon. Well then, Mark, what did you think of 2024's Ricky Stanicki? I remember going back about a year and a half ago, two years, mate. Me saying for the week was about half hour too long. This one, and I'd say this one was about half hour too long. It was started off well. I had a lot of fun to start with it, and then I found like it dragged his ass a bit, and then I, f- I still think overall I enjoyed it. <laughs> I do for what it is, 
but at the same time... Don't be embarrassed, mate. You seem like you're embarrassed that you enjoyed no, Ricky's Danicki. No, I, there was enough in there that I enjoyed it, but I, stri- I, I thought, this joke's done now, mm. about halfway through, and when I looked and I thought, if I had half hour left, I think, oh, that's all right. But I looked and I still had an hour left, and I thought, kind of, is done I think uh, I think there's a, a little bit of a feel good message behind it though, isn't there? You know, it's like uh, yeah, it's negative, isn't it? Huh? It's a negative, isn't it? <laughs> I, just, I mean, I've got to be honest. I didn't mind it. Yeah. I didn't mind it. So um, straight away, it's a fun idea for a film. Great idea, and, <laughs> isn't it? It's great idea. Like the idea of it, absolutely. And imagine it, you genius idea. All the sort of things that you think about, and you're like, Do you know, why didn't I think of something like that? If, I mean, you'd have thought, if you'd have actually thought about that when you was a kid and run that through that long, you'd have been a fucking genius. I mean, trying to tell Cass that Johnny Manoli weren't real, <laughs> it was a bit awkward. Where is it, it got me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I used to have two, uh, two people that I, uh, that I talked to, I think, when I was a bit younger. Jimmy Deeney. So Jimmy Deeney and uh, Davy Beanbag. Were two. <laughs> okay. so I, and uh, Jimmy Deeney I still talk about now. Um, <laughs> with Jill, we know Jimmy, but uh, but yeah, Davy Beanbag's one that I've kept kept quiet, but oh. yeah, I did too. I so they, they, a, they are my Ricky's to Nicky's, basically. I think I'm an old man called Keith, was it? Who's talked to on the bottom of the stairs right. and I thought the horse was a house was haunted, right? Not okay. the horse was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, the uh, I, I just thought it was a, a great idea for a I've film, absolutely well thought out, absolutely brilliant, you know, and and it's it's one of those that I think is harmless. I thought that um, John Cena's performance was probably the best that I've seen. See, if someone was to say to me that there's a bloke called Rock Hard Rob, yeah. right, and they'd give a lineup of people and John Cena was in it, I think I'd probably pick him out of it. You know what I mean? He seemed to, I, for me, he just aced that that character. I mean, I mean, two minds about him, mate. Right. It, I'm not it, saying no. he's a good actor. No, I'm no, just no. saying, like, he just seems to have, there was a superhero uh, character he played DC one recently yeah there was Death it, Buckethead or something wasn't it <laughs> but it gave me the um, I can't think of the name anyway but that'll yeah. do Death Buckethead and uh, yeah I, it gave me the same sort of vibe as that and I don't know this sort of like um, comedy performance but played in a serious manner I think he's just about where he because he's not really a great actor at, at comedy no. or serious but if he's playing in a comedy, a fairly serious actor, I think that's about where he needs to be. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm just in the middle. I can't work out whether he's surprisingly game and a laugh or desperate. Because <laughs> I haven't seen someone commit to a role. I mean, <laughs> he committed to miss more than I've seen a lot of Hollywood A-listers commit to these huge Hollywood releases. Yeah. And I know, obviously, it weren't cheap by the sound of it. Oh, someone's had it away, haven't they? To so go to that and say, we're going to put you in a Britney Spears uniform. I mean, I've, I didn't even mention that because I've got that later on where right. that's the one thing that I don't want to fucking ever see it, again. It's just, can you imagine going up to someone like that and going, right, this is what we want you to do next. He's going to costume and he sees it. And for him to stand there and go, yeah, all right. I think he's, I think he's game. Because oh, he's, he's a he wrestler. Is. He's been He's been acting the whole of his career yeah. as a wrestler oh, granted, you know what yeah. I mean and yeah. he has done comedic parts as a wrestler I think and I, I do think he's going for he did a, I think you have to be as a as a wrestler did a for fucking all, good job yeah, I, for, I can't for all of the apart. silly fucking characters and all that that yeah. they give you to do and stuff on but he was way. quite a macho character wasn't he he said he was a man's man he's a rock now I can't imagine the rock doing this <laughs> he might do I don't know but to actually like, I'm John Cena, I'm a man's man. I'm a, I kind of imagine him going down the Steve Austin route. And to actually come out and jump into this, I was like... But, 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 there's nothing bad about this character. You know, this no. character's a bit of a loser, but with yeah. a redemption. Yeah. So there's nothing like, you know, he's, we're not asking him to play someone that um, he, he, he's playing and he's going to be hated or he's just going to make a no. complete fool of himself. I know there were some bits... You know, the stage show, The Rock it's Hard Robber. It's a lot Rob to one. ask for someone that But mate. The Rock Hard Robber, you know, it's, it was horrendous. It made me sick. It made me feel sick, some of the things. You yeah. know, it was like, but I'd go. You know, if someone said to me, John Cena's doing Rock Hard Rob in Vegas, I'll probably book a ticket and the, go. The masturbation show was surprisingly funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was rank, but I'd go. It's the sort of thing I'd go and see. But it was done well. <laughs> but I can, just, I can imagine it being an absolute crack on set. And to actually embrace it and to 
give it every I mean I've got some mad fucking facts about this if you want some mad Have facts you? about yeah it's mental mate so this was originally sorted in 2010 right. right this film now it was originally supposed to be James Franco right right so who is who Rock Hard Rob yeah right now so then he dropped out right, right to be replaced with Joaquin Phoenix right, right. <laughs> now he dropped out right and he went to Jim Carrey right right now Jim Carrey dropped out to be replaced by Nick Cage, right? <laughs> I'll watch that. So Nick Cage, right? But the financiers wanted Nick Cage it to be a Nick Cage film with a bit of action in, and they went, "No, no, no, we're not doing that." So it got right. dropped again. Right. Amazon and Zac Efron picked it up and went, "John Cena." Right. I wouldn't have picked him. <laughs> I wouldn't have picked any. I don't know who. I, if you'd have written that down on a bit of paper, but they. But there you go. Is that not because he's known in the business as being someone who could that off you know clearly if they just went if you're saying he just went oh yeah we do it and we want John Cena I mean I've, 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 I'm probably coming across right I've got no negatives about him no. I thought he did a fucking great job yeah. I just I would never have ever picked him no I'd never have thought he would have committed so I wouldn't have thought he'd have even done this if I'm honest one of my highlights was the first encounter with him when he was after the <laughs> when, he, when he just ordered the drinks <laughs> and the calamari, calamari. And there, and he, I thought that was great yeah. I thought that was good uh, it was a great imp- a great start and then the when they met him again when he got off the plane when he pissed himself <laughs> it's not what you think he just it is. said can you smell sea <laughs> it's just, it's just piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean that was good I did enjoy it um, the way the thing that I liked about the film was there was a lot of sub stories but they, none of them really, they were all on the periphery. So it meant that I didn't have to give a shit about any of them, but they were still part of the story. And so it was, still they was all along. good. They was all good enough. It I was. Could have, yeah. I could have done without some, I think. Yeah, I mean. But I, they did their little turns and their little set pieces, like the bride's mum mm-hmm. or the woman, the, the mum's mum, mm-hmm. um, when she was trying to catch him out. Yeah. I thought her character was written brilliantly yeah. because when he shut her up and was like, and the way he actually committed, and he was like, because yeah. he comes across as a bit of a two-bit actor, yeah. and I, I'm a professional actor, his business cards, can't believe someone's rung him up. And his full commitment to it. Yeah, it was great. It and was the great. way they're going, like, he's, he had studied that Bible, and he was getting everything in, and he was fully committed to it, just made me love his character. And it also gave us the, um, the turnaround. It also made the Zac Efron gang go from being fairly liked and thingy to actually being the bad guys for a while. Yeah. And I did like that little story arc yeah. um, because, you know, we, we was expected that John Cena's character, or Ricky Stanicki, obviously, that he would be like the one that was causing all the mischief. And it turned out that he was the, 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 the nice one all the yeah. way through it. And it sort of gave that little character swing, which I quite liked. The things like the, the reporter and Keith and the hair girl and the rabbi and that, all little sub-stories that came in. But if you didn't really want to invest in any of them, you didn't need to? No. didn't really matter at the end? No, no. it was in there. I mean, for me, it followed that formula for me. It was very formulaic in its actual delivery. But I think the original storyline within it covered a lot of that up. Yeah. And I thought, it almost took me back to, do you know, like the 2000s when ridiculous films like this became cult classics, like we had Harold and Kumar, yeah. Road Trip. Mm-hmm. Um, and it got me thinking whether this film then would have been, I don't know, I wouldn't say I found it shocking, but I think now humour's been diluted to a point where everyone's afraid of doing certain jokes in case they upset anyone. Yeah. And they're not quite... like You go back to like having Tom Green and that 20 years ago and everyone was like, fucking hell, is he getting away with that? Yeah. And you put him now, you'd think he would get cancelled within two oh, minutes. Oh, 100%, yeah. So to see something like this go with the masturbation jokes, with all the other bits he was doing, and actually, you know what? Yeah, it was reasonably shocking for what you watch now. mm but it's good that they had the guts to follow through with them all. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that they did. You know, because you could have made this quite diluted and tame. Yeah, and they didn't hold back. No, he's good. I mean, the character wise, Zac Efron isn't a bad actor. You know <laughs> what I mean? I mean, I know that most of the guys and all that are like, oh yeah, girls only watch it because. But he's all right. You yeah. know, he's 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 not. He's a like bad Ryan Reynolds. He he's got his niche. Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah. The um. He's the gingerest person that I've ever seen yeah. uh, on stage. It's like they, uh, like all of his scenes had been painted extra ginger, yeah. isn't it? I mean, yeah. that was a ginger fella. He was funny, though. Huh? 
Did you? I mean, I didn't like it. The, Apparently it's hilarious on the TikTok. Right. The character itself was would be the, the one that I would least want to hang around with out of the group, if that makes sense. So he cracked me up most because he's the one who toes the line when he's with his family and he's all the... Fa- he yeah. reminds me a bit of Phil out of The Hangover, yeah. where he's like fully committed when he's in normal life, but actually when I'm out of life, fuck everything. Yeah. And he, he, I mean, he was rude to Rod when he to start with. Well, that's what I mean, yeah. And yeah. this is why, you know, after after spending a bit of time with Rod or Ricky Stanicki, as he's now known... Um, you know, I felt a bit sorry for him and this fell up. But I'm not saying it's a bad performance. I no. think as a threesome, yeah. they each had their part to play. Uh, I just didn't particularly like the character, which is, I suppose, a good performance if it yeah. made me not like him. Yeah, no, I, I, I liked all the three. I think they did well to keep all the three main characters very different personalities. Mm. Um, and we got that right from the start with the kids. And then the way it went through and how they all ended up in different paths through life, but they all stuck together. And actually, I thought all those characters were written really well. And you could see why they stayed together, but why they were slightly different yeah. in their personalities. And um, one of my favourite actors of all time was in it, uh, William H. Macy. Yeah. I really like him. The air um, dicking got a bit tiresome <laughs> for me. I loved the cup in the balls. It bit. wasn't it wasn't that long though. It was it only a little it. bit in it. It you know. felt it. It was quite a bit of a left field sort of um story arc to go, which gave <laughs> which did give a bit of character. I like the way that Ricky Stanicki basically just had the balls to tell anyone anything. That was my favourite bit when he sort of fronted him up to start yeah. with and like everyone else is licking arse yeah. and he's like you're just basically a scumbag. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, that's what I liked about the yeah. character, you know, and, and, and everyone, we all need sometimes people to do that. I like to think that uh, that, that I do that enough to people and uh, yeah. and, and, and give them the blunt I, truth. But I get the glare from the missus you need sometimes it, when someone says something and I take a breath in and she looks at me if just say, don't. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I've got to say something. You have to sometimes, don't yeah. you? You have to. But, um, but yeah, I you know, I I was worried about having someone that I uh, do enjoy watching in films. I think he's a great actor, um, and I was a bit worried about having him in there. But I thought he played that part really well. I like the way that he played it. Yeah, it, it, like I say, I think the whole work added into the workplace bit was very good. Sort of mixing that work and pleasure bit. I mean, I can't remember what they called the circumcision party. Uh, yeah, I can't but remember it's sort of why they're talking about that, and it's like, yeah, that's totally my bag. We should do it again soon, and all <laughs> of it's like that. And he does it with the cigarette, the cigar <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the 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 thing with the work, obviously, they bought it in to bring Ricky back because that was quite a good turning point. Where you know they he'd done his thing, they all thought he was great, and they just paid him and got rid of him, and then all of a sudden he's back, you yeah. know, and you think it's going to start going. You think that Ricky Stanicki's going to start fucking their stuff up, and but you know it's it's the other way around, really, isn't it? You know, I mean, they get jealous of him and that, and I think that was a a good, uh, I don't know, a red herring, yeah, as to I, where I, the story was going to go. I mean, I, like you say, I think the moral bit is there where you like don't judge people, but mm-hmm. everyone's had a different story. I think it got a little bit too saccharine towards the end when we had the little party thing and the special video and all that, and I was a bit like. Oh. But it was all right. It was an all right ending. I did think to myself with 20-odd minutes to go, how the fuck are they going to end this? Yeah. It just felt a little bit too prolonged at points where I was thinking, like, we stopped and made dinner, and I was like, I kind of want this to end now. Right. But it, it wasn't necessarily that I weren't enjoying it. I just felt it had started to outstay its welcome. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, who don't love a bit of toilet humour? Oh, yeah. Um. Which is Which is great. But I did like the little twist at the end with the heavies. I thought that was quite... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Because he, was, he sort of dived and you thought, oh, he's going to get try and get shot and he's going to take a bullet for him. And this is why he went, how's that working out for you? <laughs> it was funny. Enough, but I suppose that, that joke was, was from the start, really, wasn't it? You know what I mean? It went right through right to the start. Yeah. And it wasn't as you expected. So it was just one of those where... It was, it was happening, as I said. If you didn't get too invested in it, it didn't really matter. Gave you a laugh at the end. Yeah. The the couple of scenes, really, that I thought were funny, the one where he wet himself. I did enjoy the bowling ball one where it sucked her air in and then both the balls plopped down onto her head. I enjoyed that, you know. So, there was a bit of a confusing one at that point to me because he, I thought his character was going to turn. Right. Because he sort of cousin it. He was talking about a 
pair, and then yeah. he just sort of just looks and went, no one fuck it, or something along the lines of no one likes you or something like that. And He's just went, being blunt, wasn't he? Yeah, and I was just like, Whoa. we just said that. Well, yeah, well, no, he just didn't like the air. Yeah, did he? He didn't no. see the point in it. That was her thing, but. You know, like he was just being blunt, like he always was. But yeah, oh. you're right. It it seemed a bit off at the time. Oh, it just but seemed then, a bit of a misstep. But then it turned around and she got her hair sucked in. That was and good. I was like, yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Offers if it scalped her, might have been a bit better. <laughs> but you know, um, and then I got the Britney Spears thing was the stuff of nightmares. But I guess I just needed a throwaway film. You know, I uh, we we didn't choose that we were going to do this uh, till quite late. No, so I've watched it twice, no. and I enjoyed it. Both times, um, I'm not uh, not ashamed to say. Someone said to me at work, "Should I watch it?" I went, "Why not?" You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I not mean, going to break any records. But I was talking to Miles earlier, and it's like he was like, "What do you think of the new Rodale?" So I'm like, "Look, it's films like this and that are not going to be necessarily released at the cinema. And if this is a sort of thing you get in, it's free basically, isn't it? Yeah. I ain't had to pay. I ain't had to go anywhere. I've sat down, I've watched a new film, I've laughed, and I've enjoyed it, and that gives you a lot." Yeah. I mean, I can't help but feel a little bit of love, more love towards it, that it was just so, all a bit under the guise of a standard comedy formulaic film. Such an original, great idea. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, what score you got? Now, for me, mate, I probably won't watch it again. Right. Uh, but I, no regrets about watching it. But I've got 62. Have you? Yeah. I've got 66. I okay. can't give it much more, you know. Yeah. I mean, but it, it, it's, I mean, 6.6 6. 6 is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, you know I, mean? I think Pretty if this was good. an hour and a half, I think it would have topped up a bit more, but I just felt, like I say, just dragged a little bit. There you go. Um, good, good. Uh, I have i haven't got anything down on me also. Watch the watch anything else? I mean, no, I've just sat in hospitals. <laughs> you got your phone? You could have watched something? You could have watched Ricky's to Nicky again on your phone? No, because mm. they want to talk to me. Oh, no, no, just take headphones and... Sit there and then she starts talking to other people. No, that's And exactly. everyone's going, oh, yeah, we've been here for this long as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, Fucking fuck stop yeah. all that shit. Yeah. So, uh, okay then, mate. Right, should we move on? Yeah. This is the next section. This is the section that we have to call... Homework. Homework. we go so this is the section where we give each other films that we love or we just want to make mark sit through um and it was me to you this week <laughs> i gave you a 2024 film directed by robert morgan starring eiling Franciosi, running time of 93 minutes 5.6 on imdb 89 percent on rotten tomatoes box office of eight hundred and four thousand dollars. i don't have a budget we have a synopsis of a stop-motion animator struggles to control her demons after the loss of her overbearing mother. I gave you 2024's Stop Motion. Mm, do you reckon I like this or not? Uh, I, uh, for, you know, I think it was more for you than it was for me, mm. but it's difficult. I don't know. I really liked it. Did you? Yeah, I didn't love it, but oh. I really liked it. I really liked it. For me, it sat in the shadows of censor. Yeah. Quite a similar-esque yeah. thing, which I think is... Since there's much more accomplished film in The Descent Into Madness for me. What, what is it you like, just quickly? What is you you like about these films that are like, um, you know, they've they got this element of they can do anything because it's, you know, it's about mental health and stuff like that. So yeah. they can get away with anything, like mm. can get away with dream sequences and stuff. What is it that makes you like that sort of thing? Whereas I'm quite literal. Yeah. And I like to know, you know, I don't, uh, as I said before, when we watched that film last week, I was thinking about how long did he fall asleep on the bus for to have that vision and stuff yeah. like that, you know. I don't know. I, I think it gives, I, I think it gives a genuine idea of either people's psychosis or what actually happens in the mind when people are having these mental episodes. Because I think it's easy for people to sit and judge when they've never been through it. Right. And I think, actually, this is probably not that mad right. in these people's heads. And like to sit there and think, oh, that person over there is mental. They're struggling. They're having a breakdown. This is probably why they're so chaotic and why they're so manic and why they're having this manic episode. I uh, I 
that was uh, at home with Jill in the kitchen uh, the other day because she's going to a uh, half marathon. She's going mm. away for a couple of nights because she's staying in a hotel while she does it. Um, and uh, I started to like um, talk to myself a bit and do some uh, silly song and that. And uh, and I turned around to her and said, and there's a snippet into what it's going to be like in this house <laughs> while you're away. And she went, I have absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever <laughs> yeah i mean if ev- everyone's got their quirks everyone's got their things and you like we said with ricky stanicky and his background and his struggles and things like that it's anything going on to the can create these things and it's i think it's human life with all these people and all this shit going on we see mental health declining and the triggers whether they're big triggers small triggers and i think stuff like this isn't as far-fetched as people think in people's head we see the things on the tv where someone's gone nuts and murdered three people the brain is an amazing thing and this imagination's got to come from somewhere Mm -hmm. um so i don't i don't think it's necessarily as far-fetched in people's heads than we think obviously shit like this don't happen in real life Mm -hmm. like these little things come into life but that might happen in someone's head Mm -hmm. it's I don't think it's as crazy as people make out, and it gives a good little glimpse into these sort of illnesses. Um, I wish the film mate had given as much as Ashleen Frankiozzi. She mm. was fucking great. I thought she was brilliant. Um, I could have done without the ghost kid, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. Uh, I'm not really sure what she offered, and I found her a bit clunky with the character involved. Kid was all right, um, whatever. Didn't do a lot, but... I she wasn't. Just, I wasn't in the list of. I just don't cars think she fitted in very well. Um, it was a bit like oh, devil on the shoulder and hearing voices, I suppose. Um, but I felt a better character choice would have worked in its favour, whether that be her voice, whether she was going through psychosis and she it was her in a monologue or something. A better way of putting that across than a little ghost kid. I think that's lazy. Oh. Get a little ghost kid. That will do. Is that like a dream sequence? You remember? Remember when we watched Ghost Stories? Yeah, and that had that dream sequence at the end, and it completely yeah. ruined it for us. Yeah, it's just I, I, I just mm, I thought there was some brutal dialogue um, from Ella. I thought she was great when she got into a swing, and she, a filter had gone, and she just destroyed her boyfriend by saying, "You're not a musician." I was like, "Oh, that felt so awkward." You've heard that before, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> many, many times, mate. Uh, not really a lot of side characters, but I thought they was all solid enough. Yeah, there weren't many people in it. Was no, there? no. Um, actually, weirdly fascinating to watch how stop motion was done without like watching a Wallace and Gromit documentary. I mean, our mother doing it was fucking horrible, wasn't it? Yeah, you know what I mean. That was very uh, so oppressive. Yeah, that, that 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 scene. You can tell why she was. Fucked up, but, um, you know, I'd have just smashed it and fucked <laughs> off, smashed it on the head. I wouldn't have done it. I mean, just watch it. I'd love to have the time, the equipment, the patience, the imagination and any kind of talent to give it a go. I, I guarantee that mine would be sweeping motions. There would be a lot of missed stuff there. <laughs> He'd be moving a couple of inches at a time by the, <laughs> after the first hour of doing it. It'd just be bounding everywhere. But, you know, you're the sort of twat that would do it. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a clever medium, isn't it? It really is. It when, is it's, when it's done well, um, and it's it was quite nice to see it integrated within... Cause normally, if you get stop motion, you get stop motion film, but to actually have it integrated within a film. Wasn't as much of a fan when the crossover came. Mm. Like, she's laying on the bed and the little goofy little doll thing's walking in. Could have given or taken that, but I liked having the frames and the scenes in each different medium. I thought that was good. Mum was a bit of a prick, and I can only assume the depth of her madness was down to a lot of that oppression. Yeah. Um, and that sort of complete submergence. Um, and it's weird because it's like that tr- she had a lot of trauma, and it's weird to think that actually it didn't come from anything other than just oppression. Mm hmm. I suppose she wanted her independence and her decision-making capabilities given to her. We don't know what happened before, like with parent, uh, dad or anything like that. But I think that the situation uh, of the fact that she was, you know, it's, it's the, the thing that she was doing, the stop motion, where it was all these little movements and having to do that. If, you're, if you've got someone oppressing you, I suppose it's yeah. the same. If you're playing football... Frame, outside frame. and, and you, you know your dad, your, your dad or whatever is yeah. having a go you've still got that outside and other yeah. people but the fact that she was like literally looking at like a 
tiny little movement on a thing and keep yeah. having to do that over and over again. Like yeah. the situation would just be way too so much. much I'd it? say I'd be smashing shit up, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, I can imagine this film having a lot of haters. Um, I don't think people necessarily like the style. I think this will blow a few people's minds sitting watching it again. Uh, Cass was not interested. She was just like, what the fuck are you watching? And I'm like, shush, it's good. But again, the, is, is it not the um, the fact that it is slow? You know, yeah. every, even, even the scene when she's just doing something is just a, so a tiny much. little part of a, a, an inch at a time. I love it so, and, you so know, much like St. Maud and Sensor and this one. Yeah. It's just so good. Um and I, I, I think stuff like that's a massive positive for me, that it is so quirky. Right. It is so quirky. Um, Dull, you mean? <laughs> no, I really didn't find It's like find growing it. onions, isn't it? And I it, could have laid like Growing down. onions or fucking buying trees or building aviaries. It's very <laughs> dull and you like it. Yeah, I loved it. I, I, just, I just think between the... But beneath that quirky exterior and the really great performance, I don't think there was enough to elevate it like there was in Sensor. And I think it really needed pushing up. Decent bit of body horror in there. I mean, if... if Especially towards the end. Yeah, I mean, I that's probably the one thing for me. So I do like collecting. I told you about my Plague Doctor thing that I bought, didn't I? Right. Oh, we went, we went somewhere. I can't remember where we went. Uh, I think it was like a Christmas thing and Jill wanted to buy some Christmas decorations. Um, you know, like the little Santas and stuff and um snowmen and that that you put on the side. And uh I ended up buying a plague doctor. Just right. because they looked cool. To go with your Krampus. <laughs> well exactly, you know, yeah. I like all things like that. And so if if they made these doll things, these yeah. meat meat dolls, I'd have yeah. one. No worries. You want a meat doll. Yeah, no yeah. fucking worry. I thought, I thought those things looked I'm glad they didn't just have Good looking stuff, you know, like a Goldilocks looking yeah. kid or something. It was fucking horrible. Waxing. And then adding all the meat and shit in it. Yeah. Um, you know, it was right up my alley. I'd certainly have them if they built if they'd done them as toys. <laughs> if it kicked off like Star I'll, I'll Wars. I'll keep an eye on Etsy, mate. Someone might do fucking one. Fucking right. Um clever aspect of a film like this, and it's one that I tend to hark on about a lot and I bore myself with it, but <laughs> I don't think you need to like any of the characters in this. Yeah. Um. And I didn't feel sorry for her particularly. I didn't really care. Is that good or bad yeah. about a film of mental health? Someone's um, mental health disappearing in front of you, and you know, as you said before, well, it, it, these people's psyches. Should you not feel a an element of empathy I for people just, who go through it? It felt quite voyeuristic. Yeah. It was a very voyeuristic film where they weren't necessarily worrying about the character that we never really got to know her. Mm to actually like her that much or to know what she was like before. We had a couple of little snippets where she was semi-happy and she was being comforted by the boyfriend and that. And the descent did come quite quick. Do you think that that's a, a, something that the filmmaker set out to do? Yeah. So it's like a positive, you know, let's let's just show this but not get too invested. Or do you think it's something that the filmmakers missed out on and therefore should be a negative? I don't think... Because there was any, there wasn't any real redemption or saving her. Mm. I think it was deliberate not to, right. because there was there was no end to it. There was no saving her. There was no happy ending um, where we got her back to where she was and everything come together nice. I think it was a sort of voyeuristic view on self destruction. Yeah, just like a broad broad painting of, of yeah. mental health. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and I mean, you're saying it's. I weren't bored at all. Good clean runtime. I liked it. I, I thought it was great. It's like reading, though, isn't it? You know, it's like just sitting there reading a page out of a book. Yeah. You know, I just, I just sitting there thinking about doing other stuff. Right. You know. Oh no, I was watching it. I was thinking, cool, shower with bricks. I wonder <laughs> if they put some stuff on that brick to protect yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not entirely sure what the last few frames are trying to say. Um, but it was an ending, I suppose. Right. I got to it and I thought, that's a bit weird. <laughs> I haven't done too much research into what it was trying to say, but I liked the end up until we got that weird crossover with Ghost Girl. Yeah. Um, I think I think it for me it shows a bit of promise to horror. It just needed cleaning up a little bit. And like I say, Sensor this was far more superior in my head. But they both had that similar feel, that similar lighting, 
we've gone into that darkness, and I liked it. I liked it. I got sixty six. Have you? Yeah. Same score as I've got for Wiki Snicky. Yeah. So he must be good. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I don't give out sixty sixes. <laughs> no. I don't fucking like stuff. Oh. Good. Good. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I say not with not without his issues, but solid. Cool. Um, so, uh, are you, have you got one for me? For yeah, next if, time? if we ever come back, mate, <laughs> if we ever come back, I've got you a film. It's currently 6.6 out of 10 on IMDb. It's 15, one hour, 57 minutes, billed as a crime, drama, thriller. With a synopsis of two men who meet at a bus, strike up conversation that turns into friendship. For Henry Teague, worn down by a lifetime of physical labour and crime, this is a dream come true. Starring Joel Edgerton and Sean Harris. No budget, mate, but a gross of $149,441. 2022's The Stranger. I like that, Sean Harris. Yeah, he's, he's good, good, mate. He's good, yeah. Um, good. Okay. Excellent, excellent. So, mate, um, uh, do you want to reiterate how people can get us on socials? They can get us by Exarooney, which is at movie underscore drone, or via email on movie drone podcast at hotmail.com. And obviously it's probably going to be a bit quiet. I wouldn't imagine that you're going to do an awful lot while I'm away, you know. But um, so it might be a little bit quiet. I'm in my tree. (laughs) But I'll try and get this one out on Sunday. Do what I can to get it out. If it won't, if it's not, it's the next Sunday. doesn't really matter, does it? Because it won't be around for a few weeks. uh, We'd lost everyone by then anyway. (laughs) That happened a long time ago, mate. You know what I mean? That happened a long time ago. But... uh, but yeah, thank you very much to everyone for listening. Yeah, good luck and on your uh, marathon. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. And I shall, uh, we shall see everyone in some way, shape or form in a few weeks' time. Yeah. All right. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely time at yeah. work and that one of mine. So, brilliant. Do you want to say goodbye then, Mark? Goodbye then, Mark. See you later, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye. So a bit of a DIY freak, and I. So I've been trying to do some stuff. So I had an idea. I thought I'm going to knock two rooms into one. Half eye. Fucking hell! It's probably what you would do as well. Listen to that.